Now what I wanted to do today, and I know this will be uh, this will be a lot of a lot of fun, because the fun of this is I'm looking back at having it done. This was a lot of hours of work, and I thought I've sent out some pictures to my friends, of course, but I thought. A job like this, you really can't make a video out of it unless you have uh, editing skills, which Najat is going to work on helping us out with. But I thought I'd go through the steps one by one by one, and there might be something interesting, and I'm sure there's something you can pick up from this, because every time I do something like this, I learn something that I really didn't know before. Now, to, I've done the swing arm on the FZR. The, the thing that I like about po having a polished swing arm is it's easy to clean whatever chain lube and when you wax it and clean it it just makes it real nice now in this in the case of this bike the swing arm is all aluminum and it's a it's a relatively high grade aluminum I'm, it's probably aircraft grade aluminum and it polished up beautifully except for a couple of spots where you know, there's a little damage from let's face it this is a 25 year old bike but the steps that, that go into this, if you follow the steps, and it's what I'm going to try to lay out on this video, if you go through step one, step two, step three, in a methodical way, you can minimize the amount of time it takes to do a part like this. A part like this is very complicated. Step one, and I'm going to try to go through the steps. Obviously, take the part off the bike. That I, I was redoing the shock. It, it was it was one bolt to get this off and a couple of bolts in, on the uh, the caliper mounts So the part is off the bike, but now it's painted. It's it's got corrosion It's got other things wrong with it. So step one is this is a needle bearing swing arm. I took some Gorilla tape and Sealed off the needle bearings because I don't want grinding compound getting into the needle bearings So once that's sealed up step one and I have fallen in love with this stuff Simple green, I laid the part out in a big turkey pan, filled it with simple green, turn it over, walk away, go have a cup of coffee, which we may have a cup of coffee here. Okay, so once this sits for five or ten minutes, you can take it out. If it's not, if it's above freezing, you can hose it off. You can get off 80, 90 percent of the grease. Then after this is done, what I have, and this is another great trick when you want to degrease a part. Take a turkey pan, take some diesel fuel, ordinary diesel fuel, and don't do it inside your house, do it in, you know, in the neighbor's backyard if you can, and a, a stiff paintbrush or an old paintbrush, it doesn't matter what. In fact, what works real good is a flux brush that costs about 15 cents in Home Depot. And just keep grinding away. Between the simple green and the kerosene, you get the part degreased. Now the reason for degreasing it before you go to the next step, if you don't, that grease winds up working its way into corners and angles and edges, so you'd like the part to be really nice and clean before you go to the next step. Then this is the step that, that is a little frustrating or sometimes. I do it in my, in my slop sink and always wear rubber gloves. Believe me, I've tried wearing those skinny gloves that you use to paint doctor gloves and never use no gloves. Now, as we've tried, we've tried all of the stuff that's available at Lowe's, and this is the best. This, the, it's worth paying the extra couple dollars for the premium stuff. This, this will take the pain off in about 15 minutes. So the trick is paint the whole part with the stuff, turn it over, walk away, have another cup of coffee or a shot of vodka or whatever. When you come back, that paint is going to be like alligator skinned up in most places. I say most. There's always places where, it, for whatever reason, who knows what. These, these are the mystery meat things. But once you have that paint soft, now it's real easy. You can basically wipe it off with paper towels, but I found an even better way. And this is one of the tricks that I thought would be helpful on this video. Since we're going to polish this anyway, I get out my favorite thing in life, SOS. Now, SOS seems to have more soap than Brillo. I don't know if that's true. Probably the same company makes them, and they just charge you more. But SOS seems to work real well. Then what I do with the paint remover, while it's in the sink with running water, is just keep, I call it sanding, but SOSing away. And that'll get about, there'll only be paint maybe in corners or maybe around the wells or whatever. 
That step is really nice and critical because number one, it removes all the paint remover. You can use the rubber gloves so you don't get anything. And when you have the sink, put newspaper in the bottom of the sink, otherwise these parts will just, not like my slop sink is a beauty queen or anything, but, but you'll get that, that part done. So now you have the part, and, and depending on what grade of aluminum is, now I haven't done a Ducati one yet, but I'm sure Ducati used good quality aluminum. The, the FZR one was extremely good quality. That was really some nice stuff. I mean, when aluminum polishes up nice, I always think, well, they use a little bit better stuff than Coke cans or whatever. But now you have this part, and it's not polished. And, and now, if you were going to paint it, well, you could paint it silver. That's what the factory did. Why did the factory paint this silver? Because polishing it would have taken a lot of time. There's another thing you could do if you have access to a glass beater. You could glass beat it. That would be beautiful. I don't have a glass beater. Sandblasting would be too rough because then you polish it out. Polishing out a sandblasted part is a lot of work. It's more work than what I like. But in this case, I found another what I'll call a little trick, a little baby trick anyway. I took out some of my, and I have drawers of sandpaper, but I took out I, I went to a part that you really wouldn't see anyway, and I took out, and I, I remember starting with 220 grit. Now, where I, wherever I have 220, 320, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. I wound up, the, the 220 puts a lot of scratches, and whenever you talk about polishing, you're talking about getting rid of scratches. So the 220 takes a lot of material off. If you get all the scratches to go in one direction and then you go in a 90 degree direction, makes it a little bit easier. Not, not totally easy, but it's better. So from 220 to 320 to 600 to 1000, various, each grade, go sanding scratches one way or the other. Now, but, but then at some point in time, you're done sanding as much as you can off. And you're starting to say, why didn't I just pay somebody $400 to polish this? Well, I don't like paying anybody. To, I don't even like people paying <laughs> to make my coffee. I don't know. Cheap is the right word, I know. Frugal. Anyway, it? now you get to the next point. It's sanded. Now you have one of two choices now. If, if you have no corrosion and no parts that are really deeply pitted and, and damaged, you can take a soft wire brush, any shape, put it in a drill press. The little ones get in the corners nice, in the edges, inside where you can't get. Get out all the corrosion, since you're not going to polish inside here. The shock goes in there anyway. But when you look at these brushes, the ones that are gold are softer than the ones that are... Put two of these side by side, if you can see them. Let me see if you can see this. It would be nice. The one that's silver is a, is a harder material. The one that's gold, usually it's gold down here, copper plated. It's a soft, they come in two grades, at least at Lowe's they do. Probably in a machine shop supply, they have others. But these are nice. They're about $3 a piece. So for 10 bucks, you can, can be a big spender like me. Now, you can get in a lot of corners and edges and angles, but of course, it's difficult. So I found a tool that for $9 really, really makes this easy. Now. The, the wire brushes hook onto the end of this with two set screws. Let me just show it. I know, because I can picture, this would be really helpful if you were trying to do something without taking a bike apart, like you're trying to polish a part down by the shocks or something. I don't know what. But this part, now, the first thing I learned about using this, this was pretty tricky. I had a rubber glove on and I went like this to try to get in and pop. All of a sudden it sucked the rubber glove off, sucked my hand around. But I found a way. Take an old motorcycle glove, put a little bit of grease on it, and you can if you run it at a low speed, you won't tear the glove up. It'll just be like a bearing. Now it allows you, in this case, you can get inside here, get inside, get in areas where it's almost impossible to get by hand. For 10 bucks, that's a great tool. That's one I like to have. But at, at some point in time, again, we get to the final step. And this, I bought this for Vince. Vince was going to do some BMW wheels. This is a pad that just gets into every corner and angle and edge, and this worked out great. The only problem is it's self-destructed after about an hour. 
but it did allow me to get inside and get a lot of cleaning done. And it was, this was about five bucks. That was a useful tool. There's always little useful polishing tools, and these all come, everything here comes from Harbor Freight. Wheels that, these wheels would allow you to get inside places where you can't get in. Most useful one, the felt pads for getting around the swing arm edges, down inside, maybe around the bottom, I have, you can't even tell. But having these and using them in a drill press, and you even have these little buffers like this, that is super, super handy. So what happens, once you spend $20, $30 on this stuff, you've got it for life. It really never wears out. This I probably had for 20 years already. But it's all beside the point. At some point in time, it may be that you still have a part of, the, a part of this that's not real smooth and you're not real happy with it. So before polishing, this is the last step before polishing. And I gave Mark one of these little mandrels which I hope he got to use because they're really handy. You, again, these are these are about 14 bucks in Harbor Freight. Everything's from Harbor Freight. In fact, you get two of them. You get a little baby one, you get a big one. So you get a whole bunch of pads. The green ones are the smoothest. The red ones are the roughest. <clears throat> so what I always try to do is, and, and the, the brownish ones are in the, in the middle, is start with the roughest grade and work away, work around, work around, either with an electric drill or in a drill press, and then finish up the whole part with the blue pad. Now, it sounds like, up to this point, it sounds like we've done a lot of work. Well, you know what? The truth is we have done, but all is not lost, because when I think of how many hours it takes to do a part like this, to get it all shiny and all nice and neat and, and pretty. Now, all of the time we've spent right now, up to this point, we've done more than half of the job. It's all in the prep. It's like a painting job where everything's sanded and polished and cleaned. and The actual painting is almost nothing. Well, polishing this, and I wanted to do a little... This, this is really going to make... I know, I know I'm going to have somebody that disagrees with this, but I'm going to say this. In my life of doing this, and I've done this for a lot of years, even when I was a partner in a machine shop, we always had all the compounds. We always had black compound, white compound, brown compound, red, which is usually the best, white, black, blue, blue compound. Okay, the reason I'm showing this, and we have, whoop, I have jars and jars of these things. The way you would use this is this is ordinary, this is a candle. Candle wax the wheel. Try, in my case, I like to use anyone to do a test. In this case, white compound. And I'll go take, go over to the wheel, run it on some spot that I probably was going to, I'm going to buff anyway. And it'll either come out, it'll, it'll just come up beautifully, or it'll look a little on a dull side. If it's on a dull side, I try another compound. That doesn't work. I tried a blue compound. Now, I know what everybody is thinking. When you buy these compounds, it always says, blue is good for steel, this is good for brass, this is good for copper, titanium, there's a compound for everything. But this part is made out of different grades of aluminum, and the we especially the welds for sure. So what happens is some parts polish up a lot quicker than others. And it's always good to have a, a different grade of compound because basically all this is is polish. It's grit. It's what's in toothpaste. It's what's in rubbing compound and it's various grits. So by having this and being able to go back to the polishing wheel and try, oh, we'll try that. Wow, that looks great. Up, oh, put the other, try that. Well, keep plenty of wax on the wheel. A couple of the things that really work for me real well, with, especially with this job, wear a mask, that little mask, because this makes a little dust that just gets everywhere. If you have a, a buffing wheel, and I'll try to show this at the end, if we, if we have a, a minute here, you want to have a little cover over the wheel so it isn't spitting this stuff up like when you water ski in the back. But anyway, at some point in time, this will come up like a mirror. And I mean, it's, now I don't know how many hours I spent on this. I, it's, I did it over the course maybe of three or four days, because what happens with me my arms get tired of doing this. It's really labor intensive. And so what happens is I'll do it. And when I, when I start getting tired, I say, well, I did one side or one, uh, whatever. 
and then I move on to something else, buff and paint or whatever, you know. The point is you're not going to do this all in one shot unless you have two things. You have a professional shop with, with a giant buff and wheel this big. I've done this all with home stuff and with a minimum amount of stuff. I'll bet everything I have here isn't worth $100. So, and I've used it for 20 years already, so you wonder how many swing arms can you polish for that money. But I know if you take a part to somebody to, I heard that, this is funny, I heard somebody was polishing RD legs and they were advertising they'd do the two legs for $100. I wish people would start sending me parts for $100. <laughs> anyway, it, it seems like there's a lot of money to be made if you really want to do this. But anyway, the, the point is, I have this part done. It's going to go back on a bike and when we put the bike back together. There's a lot of little ins and outs. Now, what I tried and it wasn't really worth doing, I took the buffing wheel the hand buffer and ran it around and it, it didn't seem like it, I gained much out of it. It it was like it didn't hurt anything but it wasn't a big deal either. So what I always do at the end of these jobs I always take all of my grits and I'll take this is the medium cut which works great on paint. Oh this is this this 8021 is the number. This material to buff out paint is the only stuff you need. This and 2500 grit paper. I also always have this, the, the polish that this, I like to buy stuff in AutoZone and Lowe's where it's cheap. When you buy this stuff made in, you know, high tech stuff, it's the same stuff in a different jar. So, and, and if you ever can find it, there's a product called Gorham Silver Polish that works great too. To, it's like three dollars for a tub like this. Anyway, it, it's all beside the point. When you get to this point, now you have it polished. It's back on the bike. What you're going to need to do is about, because it's different than chrome. If you have like, like a, a Harley where everything is all chromed up, it has a certain look. It looks, to me it has a different look. I personally like the look of aluminum. If you put a piece of aluminum polished by a piece of chrome of the same part, the aluminum kind of looks deeper, has a different glow. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's subjective anyway. But anyway, what you need to keep it like this is a microfiber, some of this polish, and maybe I would say this. This, this is what I would do about once a month. Now in the FZR, I polished the whole frame. What happened is, I just, it was a long winter and I got carried away. But, but the point is this. If I take any of these polishes, the AutoZone polishes, to bring this back after this has been sitting out in the, oh my God, out in the sun for uh, a month, two months, or, or if you ride in a salty, rainy environment, at, at this point in time, once the part is polished, you're pretty much home free all. Let's, let's really be honest about it. And every time you polish it, it's going to be easier and nicer than the time before. The fact that you see the rag get black means you're removing material. And I'm just doing that to demonstrate that if I had to do, I would guess, and what I typically do is if I'm going to polish a bike, the time I want to polish it is if I'm going to ride on Saturday, I want to do it Saturday morning. So that once it's polished, it's good for the whole, that day, it's perfect, doesn't have bird doo-doo on it or whatever. And then all your friends think it's clean all week long when it's been sitting in a dusty garage. Anyway, I want to show a couple of things that have gone into this project that I think They'll be helpful. They'll be. It'll be useful information. And again, that part. I was. I think that's going to be one of the focal parts of this motorcycle. Now, what I did. And I don't even have the light on in here, but let me put the light on. This is the kind of stuff. I bought this recently. I got rid of the little one, which it now resides over here, by Najat's custom purple fuel can. The little one worked fine. This one has a real soft wire wheel on it, which is nice for, but, but of course anything with a wire wheel is going to leave like a sandblasted finish that's sometimes difficult to polish off. It can be difficult. This grinder is about 70 bucks. If you have the coupon, you can get 20% off, which I did, of course. So maybe it really costs 55, I don't know. The wheel is waxed. It's better to use a used wheel a new wheel takes a long time for me to break it in to get it where I'm happy with it. And what they do, <coughs> of course here's another, they give you this wheel, 
Look at the size of this wheel. And I was thinking, wow, if you, if you were doing a 747, well, the problem is the wheel is so big, it's really difficult to do the parts we do. This would be good if you were doing a kitchen table or something. And this is another thing, I wanted to show this, and look, you can see how many of these pads I've used since we've been doing this job. The, this, this little guy is a thin wheel. Got a real, it's a hard thin wheel. Now what happens, every time you break through to one of these sets of stitches, it'll scare you, the string will come flying out and goes brrrr for about 30 seconds, and then it goes right back to being a buffing wheel. But anyway, here's the other part. And I always leave this right up here. I always leave, see, this is a good thing. Where this resides, there's always gonna be dust. So what I have is one of these little vacuums that I can, from time to time, just vacuum up stuff. The stuff gets on the rug. It gets on everything. It's kind of messy, in fact. But soon as the weather warms up, I take this outside, bolt it to a table, and work outside, just let the stuff blow into the neighbor's yard. So here's the trick, you're gonna use the buffing wheel. Always put a hat on or else you're gonna have black hair. These old motorcycle gloves are great that the parts don't overheat in your hand. Always wear safety goggles. I like ear protection because this thing is loud as a ridiculous. And, and a mask, and you can tell these masks, I have a bunch of them, worth using and worth keeping the area clean. Now, what it is, again, once, once you find a use for this, now the door is open to. An example, when I had the one or the other bikes apart, I polished the clutch levers, polished the, there's a hundred little parts. Anytime I have bolts off a bike, I come in, wire brush the bolts, get off all the corrosion, polish the head of the bolt, and there's always wax on that, so it always le it, it keeps them from rusting too if they're steel. So these are the little pads that I think are super, super useful very inexpensive and again I hope Mark got some good use out of them the little rotary cutoff wheels I use those all the time these little these little guys for getting in corners and edges and angles super super useful this guy of course if you got to cut a bike in half real useful another thing it's and I've, I've shown this to my good friend John Poth here this is fur this this polishing wheel at the end of everything, if the last thing you do is polish it with this, this, this just puts a really incredible shine on everything. Really, and, and it comes with the little buffing pads too. So, like I said, I, I don't know how much of this information is useful since one of our goals is to share information, but I know if you wanna have, there's a lot of choices of course, if you have parts that you have to polish, there are people that do this for a living people would charge a lot of money. If you like chrome, at this point in time, if you did the polishing and brought it to a chromer, the chroming would be a lot less than if you bring them the part with paint on it. So, so that becomes a factor. Now, one of our next parts, we're gonna be painting the wheels, so that's gonna be another whole nother video. I did all the cleaning of all the bolts. Every time I have a bolt off the bike, I clean it. Bolts like this, everything I try to polish, by the way, this is a great tail light. I just, I have these on all of the bikes that I've done a little custom tails on. I don't know if we can show how bright this is. This is the Try Me, yeah, Try Me. Luciano's got those on a couple of his bikes. I have them on. I polished up all these little parts. Now, just as an example, here's another part. This is ready to polish. We need, this will probably be in the next couple of days. I've marked which is the bottom which is the back. I'll polish it, of course, but I won't spend all day. But the part I'm going to see, the top and the side I'm going to see, I'll spend an incredible amount of time. I'll get that perfect if I can. And this old muffler that really was in rough shape when we took it off the bike. The risers, all of the foot peg brackets, the discs, even the bolts that hold the discs on. Uh, so once you have this tool in your shop, all of this stuff is free. It's just time. And and I the nice thing about it is if you have all winter, like I always have all winter to, to, to restore something, I don't like to do this work where it has to be done. Like if you ever started this in the middle of the summer, eh, you, you know, I, but in our case, we have roughly three to four months of 
we're more than likely we're not going to ride if we do ride it'll be a short ride and we'll also be drinking a lot of coffee that's for sure but the last thing is I finished up the helmet this used to belong to Frank Straub a really good friend some of the parts that we've done on this so we're, we're basically one by one those parts are arriving in the cellar getting restored little carbon fiber part that we made I'm not sure if you can really see that and we're experimenting with in fact we got Najat stuff all over the top here Najat's Ducati with the flat clear he's really excited about that we're going to be working on that in the next couple days all of the parts that are going to go to this and every part of this bike that I've done the, nothing has left my cellar so what I like about it and the, the few things that like John Pothy are making the decals what I like about it is this is an in-house job there's no sending it out to uh, you know California or Mexico or something it's really everything's done here I'm pretty proud of the stuff that I'm able to do in this limited if you saw this environment now what limits this environment and I'm not saying this in a negative way it's a positive way is if you look at the other half of this the other half of my cellar is a Thomas the Train layout <laughs> and because we babysit almost every day for some point in time so I used to restore bikes and if you looked at the shop from this angle you'd see you know, well at some point Miles is going to grow up and this will go back to being a motorcycle restoration shop now if I had the ability to bring the lift in here and, and whatever well that'd be cool but we don't and so we got to be tough guys I got to go out there and work in the cold we're going to be doing these wheels in the next couple days I do one wheel at a time too and again what's going to happen if you get interested in polishing even just polishing up the bolts on your bike I remember Larry Dettori 